okay i'm really hoping that this is working now because for some stupid reason my microphone wasn't working um but i just managed to video call a friend from my laptop and it is working so fingers crossed you guys can hear me can you hear me chloe she's like my sound person yay Woohoo! I have no idea what happened there. I'm wondering if it might be because I scheduled the live um, and maybe it's not working. But anywho, I am back. Thank you for being patient with me. <laughs> Yay, I'm here. Okay, so let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> for those of you who don't know me, I am Hannah. Um, and I run Duck Lane Books, which is an independent Asborn bookshop. Um, oh, well, I was nervous about this, but now the nerves have all gone out the window because I've had some serious technical issues, but it's fine. This is um, real life. This is me. So, yes, let me just grab my notebook because I was panicking. I had my phone tripod and all that malarkey. Um, so, yes, I am Hannah. This is my shop. This is Duck Lane Books. Um, and I wanted to share with you today a bit about my mental health and how it has changed um, and how it's all kind of interlinked with my Asborn business and how it has changed over the last year. Um, I'm usually very open about my mental health. I think it's very important as a woman and a mother that we are open about the state of our mental health. Um, but I am feeling a little bit daunted about sharing this with you today because they I will be recalling some dark times um so yes I'm just gonna go ahead and get started so for those of you who don't know me too well I have been running my Asborn business for just over a year now I started back in November last year um it was actually the 8th of November I missed my Asborn birthday but there's be a little bit about that at the end so make sure you stay tuned um yeah I've been doing Asborn a year and the if you saw me then you would think I'm a completely different person that we are actually two different people um but we're not it's still me um but if anyone who has had mental health struggles of their own will understand that it does feel like a bit of an out of body experience you feel like you're looking down on someone who you don't recognize and um and it's all very alien to you um you're acting in ways that don't necessarily feel natural but they feel like you're stuck in a way so my kind of sticking point was um this time last year i was on benefits um i'm a single parent I have a little girl who is nearly four and it was it was a quite a dark time. I had postnatal depression when my little girl just after she was born, but it didn't kind of um, show itself straight away after she was born. It was over the course of several months and it wasn't until she was about 10 months old that I was actually diagnosed with postnatal depression. Um, and then I had to go back to work and it was all just a, a hot mess, really. I couldn't cope with trying to deal with my mental health and working then part time. I had had my flexible working application approved, which was great. Um, but I just felt awful and run down all the time. And as the weeks went on in the run up to Christmas, I was working in retail. So things just got busier and busier and I was more and more exhausted and I had a complete breakdown and I just couldn't carry on. I was having panic attacks left, right and center. I felt eternally guilty all the time that I was not around my daughter so much um because the days that I was with her she would be super super clingy because I hadn't seen her for like the whole week um or like three or four days on the trots because of how my shifts um were arranged and it was just so difficult and me and my then husband obviously were at each other's throats it was it was a toxic environment to be in um and needless to say, my marriage broke down as well. 
And this all happened in the space of about four weeks. I was signed off work. I had my breakdown. I was signed off work. My marriage fell apart. My husband left. Literally everything just went wrong all at once. And I kind of buried my head in the sand a bit about it all um, until I reached a point where I realized that I, I had to do something because I had to keep money coming in for me and my daughter. And I that's when I signed up for benefits. I knew I needed help, um, every bit of help that I could get my hands on. So obviously I um, had help from the doctors. I went to kind of one-to-one -one talking therapy sessions um, and did CBT and various things like that. If you want to know any more about the kind of services and stuff that I used, then drop me a note or I'll talk a little bit more about it at the end. Um, but yeah, so I was basically getting every help that I could. So I was on benefits and um, fast forward about a year or so, I'd been on the benefits for a year. This was October last year, so 2019. And I had discovered that my ex-husband was in a relationship with someone and it was quite painful to find that out because um it was messy let's just say that <laughs> i um i don't want to go paint in a horrible picture of the end of my marriage because that's not what i'm here to talk about i'm talking about my mental health in all of this but that was one of those things that really impacted me and it was coming up to christmas again and i just felt like the rug had been pulled from underneath me and I had already experienced that feeling from dealing with the postnatal depression and my marriage ending and various other things. And then to have that feeling again of it kind of being pulled from underneath me or that it was about to, I didn't want to let that happen again. And I didn't want to feel like my life was out of control um that I wasn't in control of my own life or my own destiny and things were feeling pretty bleak at this time um I just felt like there was no light at the end of the tunnel there was no end in sight I was on benefits I wasn't working because I couldn't afford to fund the child care um for a part-time job that I would potentially be getting it was just like a stalemate situation I was just stuck basically and I knew that I needed to do something for me um, in terms of my mental health um, and getting money coming in as well. And one of the things that I remember my doctor saying or my, my counsellor saying to me was how that if I took care of my mental health and made that a priority, then everything else would seem a lot easier and things would start to kind of click into place a bit more. So kind of having this information um at my disposal i i thought about joining asborn again i'd already thought about it while i was on maternity leave and i didn't go for it i think because i can't necessarily remember exactly there are a lot of things about the kind of timeline history of this that are quite hazy and i think that people who've been through depression themselves will probably understand that when things get really difficult, there are certain events or kind of blocks of time that your brain will just block out completely because it's just too painful and traumatic to deal with. Um, so I know that I was interested in joining Asborn when I was on maternity leave, but I can't necessarily remember why I didn't go about doing it. Um, but then when um, it came to actually signing up, so October last year, October, November time, I I felt like I had nothing to lose. I had no one to answer to. Um, I It was literally just me and my daughter. And yeah, I just thought I'm just going to go for this because if it works, then amazing. Um, if it doesn't, then I haven't really lost anything anyway, because this is a pretty rubbish situation that I'm in right now, um, not having a job being on benefits my mental health in tatters i just felt like surely nothing can get any worse than what the situation that i'm in right now so why don't i just go for it and i did um 
I saw a Facebook ad came up on my feed and it was actually the same lady that I'd been in touch with before uh, and didn't act upon it. And I just messaged her and said, I'm interested in, in joining us born um, and selling these books. Um, can we have a bit of a, a chat about it and tell me a bit more? And she was so lovely. She said, she asked where I lived because I said I lived locally. Um, and we went for a coffee in the local coffee shop and it was really nice. And I remember it was blowing an absolute gale and it was chucking it down. And it was like the last weekend of October, first weekend of November. And it was really miserable weather. And I remember sitting on the sofa with her in the front of this coffee shop and literally just putting the world to rights. And she told me how long she'd been doing it. She'd been doing Asborn for 14 years. Um, and she was actually a single parent at one point during her Asborn journey as well with two kids. And she'd still managed to make this work. And her business was just growing and growing and growing. And she'd adapted as well over things um, getting more kind of moving more onto the internet and with social media and things. And her business was just thriving. And I... I wanted to be a part of that. I thought if she could do it with two kids in tow and dealing with a marriage breaking up, then why couldn't I do it? And it was just so nice because I knew that I had these kind of tools in in my arsenal, as it were, because I'd worked in retail before. I knew that um, kind of customer service and and providing people with quality goods and helping them solve problems that was something that fed my soul. I loved um, being able to find help customers find gifts and things when I used to work in the shops um, and seeing them go away feeling fired up and elated that they had found a present and I had helped them do that. That was such a rewarding feeling. And I still get that feeling now when I'm helping people to find presents for their family or for their kids um or if I get someone come to one of my stalls and say oh, I don't really like reading it's almost like waving a red flag in front of a bull because I just cannot resist and the reward that you get from helping kids to engage with books is just amazing so yeah sorry I went off on a tangent there so yeah we went for coffee and I remember going home that evening and just feeling really fired up about it. And I just went for it. Even though I was massively skint at the time, I was very naughty and I did put my starter kit on my credit card, which I would not recommend doing to anyone. But this was one of those moments where I thought, if I don't do it now, then I'm never going to do it. So I just went for it and I thought, it's fine. I'll, I'll deal with it later. It's, I can make the money back to pay off the kit anyway unbeknownst to me at the time I could actually earn the money back through company incentives which was even better so the following week after I had signed up to Asborn I met with my mentor at a local um, kind of Christmas fair event and it was so much fun I remember that day very well I'd been volunteering with the food bank doing their big local food drive in um, in my Tesco Extra near me so I did that in the morning and then in the afternoon I went to this Christmas fair with my mentor and I was just on the stall with her just watching what she was doing how she was engaging with her customers how she laid things out and everything and it was amazing I completely got the bug I was absolutely exhausted because it had been such a full-on day but it was like I was just feeding off the energy of this event and it was just so nice and yeah, it's just really refreshing. And I was just completely buzzing. And then that week, she sent um, a message to me and said, there's a school Christmas fair coming up, and I haven't got anyone to cover it. Do you want to do it for me? And obviously, I jumped at the chance. I was like, yeah, go on then. Um, it was, yeah, it was a local school. So I knew that there would be people there that I knew. So it was a little bit scary. Um, because it's kind of that balance of, oh, there'll be familiar faces, but people will know that I'm doing this and I'm putting myself out there. And it was very scary initially setting up. I was super nervous. I didn't want to seem unprofessional. Um, I didn't want people to know that I was a rookie and, and all of this. But as the evening went on, it must have been about 
I think it was two and a half hours this event was. So it was after school for a couple of hours. The kids all came in with their pocket money and various things. And it was nuts. I made 150 quid. And I that was 150 quid that I didn't have in my pocket before. It was ridiculous. I, from someone who has been living kind of hand to mouth for the last year, um, and then suddenly I'd made 150 quid in cash from selling my books at a Christmas fair that lasted two and a half hours. I was like, this is amazing. Um, and I can remember my dad picked me up because um, he was helping me to take all my stuff there. Um, obviously, because he could do the heavy lifting. And um, and I can just remember, I was just on an absolute high after this event. Like, I can't believe I've made this much money just from selling books. And it didn't even feel like I was working because I was just playing with these with the kids. Like, I had a couple of wind-up books out and was showing it to them and some of the, like, fingerprint ones and helping them spend their pocket money on sticker books and stuff. And it was just an absolute laugh. I loved it. Um, and I made some money from it. It was like, oh, this is amazing. I'm, I can totally see me going far with this. Um, but then of course, the old black dog, as we know it with depression started creeping in again. And the following week, um, my mentor asked me to do another school Christmas fair. And I, my mental health took a nosedive. The panic attacks started coming back. I was second guessing myself. My anxiety just went through the roof. I was like, who who do you think you are? You, you can't make something of yourself. You can't do this. And all the unkind words um, started coming back out again. And I was talking to myself in a not very nice way. Um, and I, I told her how I was feeling and how... I was struggling with my mental health as well. And she just said, that's fine. Don't worry. I'll, I'll figure it out. And that was it. And I just felt no pressure whatsoever. I didn't feel like I'd let her down in any way, shape or form. She just said, that's fine. Your mental health is the most important thing in all of this. So I'll find someone to cover that event. Don't you worry, get some rest. And it was so refreshing to have that reaction from someone. Um, yeah, it really kind of touched my heart. And I just felt like, this is a, an amazing opportunity. Like I can, I can do this. And the fact that it's still going to be there when my mental health picks up again, when my anxiety calms down, is amazing, because I'd gone from working for big corporations, um, and feeling guilty every time I needed to take a couple of days off for mental health because it would go down as another instance of sickness and then they'd be like too many of these and we'll have to give you a disciplinary and all the silly legislation that doesn't take into account what is going on in someone's head I had none of that to deal with because I was essentially calling the shots with my own business and yeah being able to have more control over when I chose to work and um how much I worked according to how much my brain would let me at the time was such an empowering thing because I'd never had that before and often as a mother as well you are constantly answering to someone else you see a smaller version of you um and I yeah I felt more in control of my life again so um skip forward a, a month or so um and it'll take us to january this year so january 2020 and i went to a training event with my mentor and it was in coventry in this lovely kind of country club hotel and i remember feeling again very daunted by it i couldn't really afford it um i paid the money in chunks to the lady that was organizing it because I was just so skint. But my mentor kept saying to me, I think you really benefit from this. This is going to be an amazing opportunity for you. I would love it if you could come. So I, I took a word for it. I trusted her. Um, and I went along to the training event because I, I felt like I needed to be there. I felt like this was 
something for me again as well because it was a night away from my little girl just having some time for myself as well and being around people who were in the same boat as me or had come from very similar situations as me and it was amazing we left at like six o'clock in the morning me and my mentor road tripped up to Coventry put the world to rights in the car on the way up there singing our heads off with all the girly tunes going it was amazing um and I just felt really spoiled as well because um I think it was part of a Marriott group and we had lovely refreshments all day there was um coffee and pastries and stuff when we arrived first thing in the morning and then we'd have various tea breaks throughout the day and then we had a, like a cooked lunch laid on for us in the restaurant at lunchtime and we had a three course meal in the evening it was amazing I was so so spoiled and it kind of just came as a standard like you come to a training event this is how we're going to treat you and it was so nice because I'd been to various training events with huge companies and hadn't been spoiled like that um which was really really nice and i remember when i got to this event i realized that i was not going to be sitting next to my mentor they had mixed up all the names of all the people on the tables and i was terrified um and i was sat on a peep on a table with i think it was nine other people i didn't know some of whom were brand new, some of whom had been doing it for a year or so, some had been doing it for several years. Um, there was one executive leader on my table, who is, which is like the highest rank you can get to. Um, and she was just so lovely. I didn't even realize she was an executive leader. We were just nattering because I remember she had an amazing Southeast accent. She was from Essex, I think. And, um, and we were just nattering and we clicked and it was amazing. And it was funny because people were thinking that I was shy to begin with, but you'll probably tell from this, I'm I'm not very shy. I'm just a quiet observer. I am an introvert by nature. Um, that probably goes hand in hand with the mental health issues and anxiety and things. But I just kind of sat taking it all in. And then as the day got on, my confidence grew a bit more and I would get more involved in the activities and the discussions that there were. And it wasn't all that, though. There were a few presentations where I could just sit back and watch. And it was it was just so nice. And I soaked up all the knowledge in this event. And it just blew my mind um, because there were people there who were earning thousands of pounds a month and had literally come from nothing. One of them I count as one of my very good friends now. Um, they had been kicked out of sixth form twice they were on benefits as well. They'd had issues with drugs throughout their life as well. And now they were earning several thousand pounds a month from their Asborn business. And it was just so nice to be able to be around people who were from all different walks of life and had made this work for them and made it work for them in a flexible way as well, that they hadn't had to necessarily compromise on their family life or their marriage or their relationships or anything it just slotted in where they wanted it to and that gave me a huge boost um just knowing that there were people who had made it work for them um it gave me that feeling of well why can't I make this work for me um I knew I had the skills and had the intelligence behind it to, to make this work um so why couldn't I and I can remember um, coming back in the car on the way home from this event and talking to my mentor about it and just saying, this is it now. I want to I want to do this um, because I couldn't see anything else that would give me the best of both worlds that I could be a mum and get rid of that horrible mummy guilt of not being around my daughter all the time um, or being there when she needs me to. But then also earning enough money that I could support us just on my income. I, I had never come across anything in the normal kind of working world, um, or especially within retail, um, that would allow me to have those two things. Um, it always kind of came at a price. And yeah, things slowly started to gain momentum. And I was feeling really fired up and we started setting some goals and it was so exciting. 
And then end of March, <laughs> you all know what's coming, lockdown. <laughs> I remember literally, it was the day after Mothering Sunday that we went into like full lockdown. And I just had the biggest wobble ever. Like most people probably, my confidence went through the floor. My mental health went through the floor. I just did not have a clue what I was doing. I didn't know if I should be trying to homeschool my three-year-old. I didn't know whether or not she was allowed to be spending time with her dad and all this because everyone was still figuring out the rules and regulations around it all. And it really shook me. Um, it really knocked my confidence. I was just exhausted. I felt like I was wading through custard um, because my ex-husband's um, partner was also ill and then he got ill and we didn't know if it was the virus. And so there was a, a about, I think it was about four or five weeks in total that my little girl went without seeing her dad at the beginning of lockdown, just through various illnesses and not knowing what we were allowed to do and what we weren't allowed to do. And just because it was so all unknown um and then we kind of reached a point where we we worked things out with her seeing him and and him and his partner both got better and and all of this and yeah and then things slowly started to grow again and it wasn't until that point like a month later that i wanted to try and put some more effort back into my business so i had gone from like sailing on the clouds basically just feeling absolutely amazing after this training event in January building all these goals and I'm trying to build my business and I'm right I'm going to do this I'm going to do that it's going to be amazing um to again feeling like the rug was pulled from underneath me um and I didn't post anything to do with my business on social media for easily a month um, I tried to take a break from social media myself as well, because I knew that when my mental health was struggling, the worst thing I could be doing was scrolling through Facebook, seeing how wonderful other people's lives were. But it wasn't necessarily like that anyway, because we were all in same storm, different boats, really. Um, but where, as soon as I reached that point where I decided that I wanted to build my business again and that I wanted to really make this work things just started to gain momentum so quickly I was amazed um and, and I just ran with it um I did I was I was busy but I wasn't feeling exhausted I was just kind of riding the crest of the wave as it were and literally from I think it was the end of April beginning of May this year to the end and to the end of June. That's the time frame that I went from deciding that I was going to build my business again. And then I promoted to team leader. And it, I just genuinely, I still can't get my head around it now. <laughs> it's like I've gone from mental health through the floor, single parenting on benefits to amazing, like it's just been up and down, up and down. Um, with my confidence growing after the January training and then things going through the floor again and then building my confidence again promoting to team leader it's just been absolutely insane um and despite kind of struggling with my anxiety th through all of this really um even this morning I was having my heart was going like the clappers especially when the technical issues were happening <laughs> Um, but I know that I kind of been handed this opportunity to make a life for me and my daughter. And there is no way that I was going to pass up that opportunity because, like I said, I could literally have the best of both worlds with this. I, yeah, I could be there for my daughter and I can still earn money from it as well. And it's just insane if you talk to anyone in my team or in my upline or whatever they will all say like how much my confidence has grown massively in this last year that I've been with Usborne um and they say like it's like I'm a completely different person and I feel like 
that person has always been there. That's the person that I was before I had my little girl. And then through various things happening and different situations and circumstances that I found myself in, like with everyone um, in life and every everything that happens, our, our mental health goes up and down. And I just completely lost myself. Um, I didn't know who I was without my husband by my side. I didn't know who I was without being a mum. It was such a confusing time. And being part of Usborne and making that choice to start my own Usborne business, um, like I said, was so empowering. And it gave me back some of that control of my life again. And as soon as I realised, not to be like kind of crazy controlling, but as soon as I realised that there were aspects of my life that I could control, um, and there are aspects that I can't, it just, yeah, my confidence just grew and grew and grew. And I can't believe that that all came from one Facebook message to a lady that lives five minutes away from me, having a cuppa and putting a box of books on my credit card. Like, it's just insane. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of this is that everyone starts off at the same point. We've all got the same box of books. Um, even my friend that is earning several thousand pounds a month, she had essentially the same box of books that I did when she started. And you can make of it what you want to. Um, but knowing as well, though, that there's that amazing support network around me of other people who have been through similar situations or similar backgrounds and have made it work for them it's I guess it's like the kind of the whole situation when you're talking about your mental health anyway um it's such an isolating thing and it makes you feel so so lonely um that as soon as you realize that there's someone else around you who has been through it or someone else who just gets it it suddenly makes you, you don't feel lonely anymore. You don't feel isolated. You don't feel like you're in your own head so much and that you're the only person who's ever felt like this. Um, and it was it was very similar with Usborne. I didn't feel alone anymore. I was surrounded by a room of majority women um, who had gone through various different things and they had all made it work for them and we were all building each other up as well. Um, everyone was cheering on each other's achievements. If people were having their wobbles and things that they were struggling with, everyone was there to kind of build them up and share our tips and advice and things that had gone well for us. And it was just amazing to be a part of that community so early on with starting my business um, and the community has just grown and grown over lockdown, especially like, I know there's people watching this, um, it's like there for moral support. These people I have never actually met, but they have become some of my really close friends over lockdown because we've been having our regular Zoom meetings um, and just keeping in touch with each other and building each other up and helping each other through our business. So, Yes, that is my story with my mental health and how it's kind of led me up to this point and, and where I am today. Um, by no means am I an expert when it comes to talking about mental health. But one of the things that I, like I just said, I know that is so powerful is if you feel like you're not alone in this and in dealing with your mental health, then that is such an empowering thing. Um, so I just wanted to share really quickly with you all before I um, sign off, because I realise I've been talking for over half an hour now. Um, I've just got three tips for you of things that I have found really useful in helping me with managing my mental health. And like I said, if you want to drop me a message afterwards, then please um, feel free to do so. Please don't feel scared about it at all. Or if you know anyone who would um, resonate with this, who can relate to it, then by all means, tag them in the comments or share this video with them. Like if I can just help one person not to feel any alo alone anymore with their mental health struggles, then my work here is done because I, yeah, I strongly believe that um, we, yeah, we need to be helping each other out. And that is kind of 
what makes the world go round, really. So, yes, my three tips are changing your mindset is a habit and a process. It is not an event. And that is something that has taken me a long time to realise. Um, I was expecting to have this kind of epiphany moment of, boom, my mindset has changed. I haven't got mental health problems anymore. I'm really sorry, but it doesn't work like that. Um, it is a case of daily habits, um, doing things every single day to get your mindset to shift from a more negative place to a more positive place. Um, and I found this through joining Asbourne, um with essentially thinking, what have I got to lose? Um, when you have reached rock bottom and you literally feel like the rug has been pulled from underneath you, you literally have nothing to lose. So there is nothing worse that could happen to you or oh, that's ultimately what you think. Um, so if you turn it on its head, surely that's got to be a good thing because anything that happens to you from that point onwards is going to be something good. It's going to be something positive because you are literally at your lowest point. Um, that's how I saw it anyway. And um, another thing as well with kind of turning it on its head as well is constantly thinking, what's the worst that could happen? Turn it on its head again. What's the best that could happen? You've already been dragged through the mud with the state of your mind and your anxiety. You know what the worst is because you are going through it now. So what's the best that could happen? So in my situation, it was like, well, the worst that could happen is that I am on my own. My marriage has fallen apart. My mental health is in tatters and I have no income. So what's the best that could happen? I start earning money, my mental health gets better. I might even meet someone through one of these events. I don't know. I don't know what the future could bring. So yeah, turning things on their head, trying to see it from a different perspective. Don't get me wrong. I know it is difficult, um, but that's why you need to make it become a habit and try to do these things every day. Um, and they will slowly start to become more familiar. So um, another, my second tip, um, I touched upon it a little bit earlier, is focus on what you can control. Um, so there are various things in my life that I haven't been able to control that, that have happened to me. And um, I know that there are things that I can control. So I can control how those situations and circumstances affect me. I can control how they affect my mood. I can control how I react to certain situations, even if they catch me unawares. Um, I can control who I spend my time with and how they those people make me feel. Do they feed my energy or do they suck me of energy and make me feel bad about myself? I can control who I spend my time with. And I want to be I need to be spending time with those people that feed my energy um, and staying away from the people that create drama for drama's sake and who stir things up. And yeah, those people do not feed my energy. They suck me of my energy. And you need to think about who you surround yourself with. But also things like how do you spend your free time? You can control how you spend your free time. Do you sit and just endlessly scroll through Facebook, Instagram, whatever if you're looking for inspiration for something um and you like looking through instagram for for inspiration i do this sometimes then by all means do it but set yourself a limit um are you just kind of slumping down in front of the telly and watching mindless tv every single evening or are you reading a book have you got a hobby you can control how you spend your free time and how that is going to feed your energy as well and how that is going to benefit your mental health and another one as well, this is a little bit controversial, is how you spend your money. If you are worrying about money and you feel like you are struggling with finances and that you've got a lot of debt, you can control how you spend that money. Yes, there are certain things that you can't control, like certain bills that have to be paid, but all the other little bits in between, you can control those as well. And to a certain extent, you can control some of the, the bigger things like energy bills, um, 
mobile phone plans, TV plans, there are, you can control those um, up to a point, you can get in touch with providers and try and save money that way. There is always going to be something within a situation that you can control. And if you put your energy into that, rather than stressing about the stuff that you can't, you're going to feel so much more empowered, and your confidence is just going to grow from there. And then my final point, um, tip number three, is to remind yourself that it's all temporary. A lot of the girls will probably laugh at me because I say this all the time, but it is. It is all temporary. Um, when you feel like you cannot see an end in sight, especially with lockdown, or if you're in a really, really dark place, just remind yourself that it will pass because it will. Like, it certainly will. Um, but then also when things are really really good soak it up relish in it like enjoy every single tiny little molecule of a moment of those good times because they will end as well um and if you kind of keep that in mind with everything when you're going through tough times or when you're having a really good day um things just feel so much more richer in life as well and that is definitely something that i have learned in spades over these last few months so yes i'm going to wrap it up there i've been talking to you guys for 40 minutes now and i yeah i'm so glad that i've shared this with you i'm so glad that so many people have been watching i just want to say huge shout out to chloe and emma my uh my Osborne family and joe ah uh, and megan's watching as well this is amazing thank you so much for watching like i said if you know anyone who can relate to this, please tag them in the comments or share this with them, share this on a local mum's page, whatever. If you think that this will be able to help someone, then please share it or send them my way. Because if I can help just one person not to feel alone, then my work here is done. Um, so I know I mentioned really quickly at the beginning that I've been doing this a year and I completely forgot about my birthday celebrations. Ha. Um, so next week from Monday onwards, all next week, I'm going to be doing loads of stuff to celebrate my Asborn birthday. There's going to be giveaways, there's going to be discounts, there's going to be silly games and stuff. And it's all going to be going on over on the Duck Lane Book Club, um, which is our grown ups community hub. Um, so yes, if you want to get involved in that, then go and join the community. Um, and I will catch up with you all really soon. Thank you so much for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Um, yeah. I'll see you all soon. Take care, guys. Bye.